Mafia hitmen are some of the deadliest killers the world has ever known. Popular culture has explored the notorious kills of some of the most famous hitmen throughout history, like Sammy the Bull Gravano and Roy DeMeo. It was because of these men that the Mafia was able to rule the criminal underworld with a reign of terror. While we've explored the stories of the most famous hitmen the Mafia has ever known, it has opened up the door to a whole other realm of mob secrets. It was the lesser-known Mafia hitmen that people really needed to be afraid of, the ones who could blend into the streets of society without anyone having a clue as to who they were connected to or how deadly they really were. In today's video, we're going to delve into the stories of the lesser-known Mafia hitmen who have body counts higher than some of the biggest names in the criminal underworld. These ruthless killers maintained obscurity and stayed out of the public eye. They weren't in it to carve a mark in Mafia history. Contract kills were just another business deal to them. From one of the most intelligent hitmen to work for the Mafia to one of the creators of Las Vegas nightlife, these highly effective killers never hesitated to get the job done. We have 10 stories that will shock even the biggest Mafia enthusiasts. Chester Wheeler Campbell Kicking our list off is Chester Wheeler Campbell, one of the most dangerous enforcers from the Detroit Mafia. He was a cunning criminal who operated the drug scene and a weapon store throughout the 1970s and 80s. Many people had reasons to fear this hitman, especially the police. You see, what made Chester a threat went deeper than his ruthless killing tactics. To this day, an exact number of kills has never been publicly released. What people really feared was this man's knowledge. He was smarter than your average drug lord, and he kept tabs on everything. Journals revealed that he kept notes of information on everyone who was connected to the criminal underworld, from mafia associates to the police themselves. That's right, he had plenty of damaging information in his notes that could bring down key members of law enforcement. Vital information was kept in these journals, such as addresses and license plate numbers. It wasn't just his side of the story. No, it was much deeper than that. The information he kept made him one of the most feared and intelligent hitmen the Mafia has ever encountered. Hundreds of names were recorded, including 10 unsolved murders related to drug cases. All of this information was brought to light on February 6, 1975, after Chester had a collision with a patrol car in his Oldsmobile. Police discovered these journals in his Oldsmobile and uncovered a trove of information, including 300 names that were suspected to be future targets. Law enforcement had no idea that this car collision would crack open one of the biggest cases of their career. Harry the Hook Ailman Next on our list is Harry the Hook Ailman. This hitman was a crucial player for the Chicago outfit in the 1970s. He got the nickname The Hook because he was involved with boxing when he was younger. As he got older, his hits became a lot deadlier. The Hook has been accused of 18 murders and was officially convicted in 1997 for the murder of Teamsters official William Logan. But people who are familiar with this cutthroat killer believe the body count is much higher. Let's take when he met with his wife, Ruth Mustari. Ruth was a stunning young waitress who immediately caught the mobster's eye. This beauty was having problems with an ex-lover, Richard Fanning, but not for long now that Harry was in the picture. On December 10, 1960, Richard Fanning's body was discovered brutally beaten and stabbed. Something tells us this wasn't a coincidence. His reputation for violence helped him solidify his ranks in the Chicago outfit. He was the key player for collecting gambling debts, as everyone in the criminal underworld knew what he was capable of. Even small-time gambling debt collectors would mention his name to strike fear into people who owed them money. Despite being one of the most feared men in Chicago throughout the 1970s, this hitman wasn't immune to the law. In 1978, he was sentenced to 30 years in prison for a series of home invasions. He was released in 1989, but was immediately the center of another investigation. In 1991, he was sentenced to 12 years in prison for extortion. Come 1997, he was the focus of another trial, this time for the Logan murder. Allen was sentenced to 300 years in prison. However, he ended up getting diagnosed with lung cancer and died in prison in 2010. Wayne Silk Perry Wayne Silk Perry was introduced into a life of Washington street crime at the age of 12. It began as a simple mission. He would keep an eye on the streets and alert the adult gangsters when he saw a police car in the area. To thank him for his services, the gangsters taught him some lessons on hustling. 
By the time he was a teenager, he was specializing in crimes that rivaled the older gangsters, like drug peddling and extortion. But Wayne eventually progressed from street crimes to more dangerous stunts for cash. He started robbing banks, then moved on to contract kills. Through his time on the streets, he connected with a drug lord named Albert Alpo Martinez. The two collaborated, and Wayne ended up becoming a bodyguard and hitman for the drug dealer. Alpo would arrange for Wayne to take care of witnesses and disloyal gang members. He would also go to the extremes and take out rivals for Alpo to eliminate the competition. Ironically, these two met when Wayne went to kill Alpo over a lie a woman had told him. Another associate who Wayne called Lil Pop talked him out of it. Later on, when Wayne was in prison, it was Alpo who bailed him out. While they were a deadly duo, their reign of terror came to an end in the early 1990s. Alpo was arrested in 1991, and Wayne was sentenced to prison in 1992. Jorge Ayala One of the most fascinating drug lords in history is Griselda Blanco. She was known as the cocaine godmother and was the first to conduct a drive-by shooting on motorcycles. One of her most trusted hitmen was Jorge Riverita Ayala, but she might have trusted the wrong man. In 1993, he turned her in to save himself. Griselda saw something special in Jorge. He was a ruthless and violent killer, but he also had a touch of charisma. She trusted him to take out her rivals and people who tried to do her dirty. This included a drug-dealing couple, Alfredo and Grisel Lorenzo, who didn't pay Griselda for a cocaine shipment. The two became a deadly pair, ruling the drug scene in Miami. However, their reign of terror was brought to justice when Griselda was arrested in 1985. While Jorge was still free, law enforcement knew enough about him to bring him in. However, he was able to stay on the run for longer than the cocaine godmother because police only knew him by his nickname, Riverita. After a bank robbery in 1993, police found the man they were looking for. When they brought him in, he was believed to be responsible for nearly 30 murders. However, they agreed to cut him a deal to avoid the death penalty if he provided information about his partner, which he didn't hesitate to do. Joseph Meldish In 2011, the world was in shock when they read a New York Times article titled Untouchable Bronx Hitman Faces Life in Jail After 40 Murders. Joseph Meldish ruled the Bronx with terror. He was part of the Purple Gang and often hired by the Genovese and Lucchese families to take out enemies. Joseph Meldish had a reputation for being untouchable. Even witnesses wouldn't speak on the things they saw him do, including one night when John Joya threw a hand grenade at him that didn't go off. Many witnesses saw Joseph shoot the man after this happened, but not a single one wanted to be involved in helping the police prosecute him. He was sentenced to prison at the age of 18 for manslaughter. He spent three years in prison and allegedly started killing again shortly after his release. Intimidation was part of the game to him. He was known to go into bars and threaten people for money, even if they didn't owe him any. One major mistake brought this man to justice in 2011. He walked into a bar wearing a black mask and shot a man to death. However, it was soon discovered that the victim wasn't who he intended to kill. Harry Pittsburgh Phil Strauss most mafia hitmen that we have covered on our channel are in it for the money. Murder is part of their business. But the next hitman we're going to discuss took on jobs because they brought him pleasure. Possibly one of the sickest hitmen we have read about is Harry Pittsburgh Phil Strauss. Phil was connected to Murder, Inc., an organized crime group that was active throughout the 1930s. His assassination style was a lot different than other hitmen throughout mafia history. To him, it was a craft and he was always looking for new and unique ways to improve his skills. Unlike other hitmen, he was creative in his weapon choices. He would use anything from an ice pick to a gun. He was also known to regularly volunteer to place hits on people. The money was never a concern. Phil was just enthusiastic to get the job done. Murder Inc. bosses could count on him to get the job done. He was thrilled to take out rivals, informants, and anyone else that threatened the gang. Throughout his career in crime, Phil was believed to be responsible for over 100 murders. He was brought to trial in 1939, where he started pulling stunts to get himself off the hook. He first offered to be an informant, but was denied. He later tried to fake insanity, but nobody believed him. Ultimately, he was sentenced to the electric chair in June 1941. Irving Big Ganji Cohen Our next story is another tale from Murder, Inc. This gang had a long-standing tradition that when a member from the inside was a hit target, that their closest friend in the gang would be the one to get the job done. 
This way, the target would be trusting and not expect anything vital to go down. Now, Irving Big Ganji Cohen wasn't a feared hitman whose name rose terror on the streets. He was more of a one-and-done kind of guy. But it was the brutality of his mafia hit that shocked true crime buffs around the world. In 1937, members of Murder, Inc. learned that Walter Sage had been skimming profits from their slot machines. So they arranged for his friend Big Ganji to assassinate him. Irving and a man named Jack Drucker picked Walter up with intentions of going out for drinks and dinner. He had no idea he was about to meet a brutal fate. It is unknown who was driving the vehicle that night. What is known is that Irving wrapped his arms around Walter's neck and pinned him down, while Jack Drucker used an ice pick to stab him. During the attack, Jack swung once and missed Walter, getting Irving in the arm. At another point during the altercation, Walter grabbed the steering wheel, causing the car to go off the road. But something about this attack didn't feel right to Irving. He was convinced that he was going to be the next target. He ran off and went into hiding. It was believed that there was a sighting of him many years later in the crowd of onlookers in a boxing movie, but the gang never saw him again. Jose Manuel Martinez In 2013, Jose Manuel Martinez was captured by law enforcement in Alabama. He was known to be a contract killer for the Sinaloa cartel. He was brought in for the murder of Jose Ruiz, a man who allegedly made inappropriate remarks about the killer's daughter. But it was his confession after the arrest that really shocked officers. Jose claimed to be responsible for 30 to 40 unsolved murders. Now, it's common for gang members to take credit for kills they didn't do. This is a way for them to cement their legacy in the world of crime. But in Jose's case, officers had reason to believe he was telling the truth. He was able to provide them with very specific details about the crime scenes that only the killer would know. He was even able to draw accurate diagrams of these crime scenes. When it came to the investigation, Jose was very cooperative with law officials. However, he never gave away any information about who hired him for the kills, who his partners were on the jobs, or where undiscovered bodies were located. Jose pleaded guilty during his trial and was sentenced to 50 years in prison. Harry Happy Mayone Harry Happy Mayone was one of the original members of Murder, Inc. Before he was involved in this gang, he helped Abe Reles and Martin Goldstein, along with his friend Frank Abandondo, eliminate rival gangsters, the Shapiro brothers. These four men grouped up with some other known criminals in New York, and Murder, Inc. was born. Now, Harry was a dangerous force. Even the look of him scared people. He got the nickname Happy ironically because he always had a mean scowl on his face. This gang was notorious for picking up murder for hire contracts. It's believed that Harry took on 12 contracts while he was with the gang. Louis Buckhalter was one of the gang's leaders. When he was the subject of prosecution during the mid-1930s, he enlisted Harry and other members of the gang to start eliminating witnesses and informants. They even took out members of their own gang. But things changed drastically in 1940 when Abreles turned informant to cooperate with the investigators. He gave key details on murders that Harry had committed. He was brought to trial in May 1940 and killed on the electric chair on February 19, 1942. Benjamin Bugsy Siegel The last hitman on our list isn't exactly unknown by Mafia enthusiasts, but it feels like a list of iconic lesser-known hitmen isn't complete unless we talk about the impact of Benjamin Bugsy Siegel. Bugsy was known for his dapper appearance and connections with higher-ups in the Mafia. He was a suave figure who played a key role in the creation of the Las Vegas casino scene. But Bugsy also had a reputation for being temperamental. His mood could change quicker than one would bat an eyelash. Friends described him as being crazier than a bedbug. His temper and violent nature helped him solidify his spot in the criminal underworld. This happened when he worked as one of the four men who killed New York Mafia boss Giuseppe Joe the Boss Masseria. Another notorious killing Bugsy pulled off was Harry Greenberg. Harry was an employee of Lucky Luciano and other Mafia higher-ups. He was allegedly causing trouble by threatening to become an informant if he wasn't paid $5,000 from Louis Buckhalter. So, Bugsy and a crew of men took care of him. It's also rumored that Bugsy played a role in the killing of Salvatore Maranzano. This notorious gangster may be known for his impact in Las Vegas, but he also knew how to handle the trigger and get away with it. This wraps up our video on the 10 deadliest hitmen you may have never heard of before. From Chester Wheeler Campbell's journal stacked with information to Bugsy Siegel's days as a hitman, each story shows us that the deadliest mafia killers have been working behind the scenes. 
Murder Inc. enlisted many of New York's most skilled killers, only to have some of them turn on each other. And Sinaloa cartel killer Jose Martinez was quick to admit his crimes, but never revealed the names of his clients or partners. Which one of these deadly killer stories shocked you the most? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for staying with us to the end. We have more stories coming up. Make sure you hit like, share, and subscribe to see more.